Welcome back to the 9 Bowling Club and this final of the plate competition in this Super Singles Year 1-8 to eight Championship which we've had here and it's been absolutely fantastic to watch. Ah, I think I'm using the wrong headset. I'll swap you over. I wonder why I couldn't hear myself and uh, and that's you know quite a blessing to most people that they can't hear me but anyway um, we're using two microphones today and the reason is that we've got Fletch Christian in who I've talked about a wee bit during the competition we saw him play a couple of games and unfortunately for him he uh, he lost those two games but in fact he probably did it deliberately because he's always wanted to be a commentator and it enables him to come in and, um, and chat about this so Fletch, Fletch well welcome to the broadcast it's uh, good to have you here and I think you'll be uh, sleeping well tonight won't you after all the effort of sort of having this organized and going around the country with uh, competitions and ending up here sort of running over to the scoreboard while you're playing and things like that <laughs> yeah no it's, a, it's been a good weekend I mean there's been a lot of bowls uh, um, you know we played for about 12 hours yesterday um, and yeah I, I mean we're all the boys this morning were feeling it a bit yeah. yeah it's a, it's tough trying to organise and play, isn't it? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think men can multitask. I think you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, the, the, I mean, yeah. The thing is, when you're letting a bowl go, that should be all going through you, all that's going through your mind. The rest of it, um, I, I don't know. You can sort of stick it in the background. I reckon. I'm not looking at any excuses for not. Going any further, really? Oh, you, you went far enough. Oh, look, I just You'd wanted be to go deep. With that. that was all. Yeah, um, I mean, it's some quality play out there. You, yeah, you, you yeah, would there have. Is. Uh, I was hoping for that. Yeah, and what you've managed with this competition is to highlight the fact that there are a lot of players between the years one and eight who are outstanding bowlers, and we've seen it here with bowlers who are into their second year that they're they're playing to an extraordinarily high standard. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, uh, well, I mean, there's no excuses in here, though, is there? I mean, you're in carpet, you've got no breeze, um, you know, the light's good. So, really, I mean, if you're going to bowl well, it's, it's somewhere like here, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the bright, bright yellow bowls, they belong to uh, Steve Rickman from Silverstream. He's picking up his bowl and then getting ready to put the mat down because this has the, been the completion of the first end of this plate final. It's between Steve Rickman of Silverstream who's uh, just moving to the mat now. You can see the Silverstream logo on his back of his shirt. He's also, incidentally, a member here at Nine Eye, and but uh, Silverstream is his club. He, he uses this great facility, uh, you know, when it's not suitable to be playing outdoors at Silverstream. And uh, his opponent over putting up the uh, scores up on the board is Mitch Cook from Brighton. That's uh, Brighton in Otago. And... Uh, Mitch Cook is in his sixth year, and uh, Rickman, whose yellow bowl is on its way to start the second set, is in his third year. So a couple of uh, promising players from those areas, and that's not a bad starter, is it? That first bowl is so important in any game, but particularly three bowl singles. Well, yeah, well, any, any game of singles, really, but yeah, especially the one and a three, three bowl tie break, too. Um, but that then brings up the question of, you know, do you take the mat and back yourself or do you want wait for the last bowl? Mm. And I think the jury's out on that one for the people I've spoken to. Well, it's been a lot of talk, hasn't there? It was interesting, you know, watching you and uh, and your two opponents today, Lee Warburton and uh, Sean Goldsbury. Um, a lot of talk during the game. It's been a friendly yet fierce competition. <laughs> Yeah, well, look, I, the great thing is, is I've met 23 other bowlers now yeah. that I wouldn't have met. And, um, you know, that's that's one of the, the beauties of the game, isn't it? And you don't meet many people who will call undesirable in this game either. No, so. no. so, yes, Fletch Christian joining me in this uh, commentary. The plate final. Uh, Mitch Cook struggled a wee bit with that first bowl. You, you found playing that ditch hand it's slightly wider yeah I mean I, I struggle a little bit with um, shadows uh, I don't know why um, my brain just doesn't seem to calculate that well but you certainly got to take your green out yep. there 
Yeah. Um, yeah, if you don't and you cross, you're gone. Good correction. So Mitch Cook from Brighton, which is, uh, I had much delight in saying to him, I, I played there with Grant Nisbet at, in the Nationals when they were in uh, Otago, I don't know, four years ago, was it? And we played our, our singles, or was it our pair? We played our peers, I think, down there. We did. We played our peers at the Brighton Club and we met the president and his wife and uh, a lot of members there. We had a great time. Uh, but my overriding memory, apart from the friendliness, was that it was one of those days in which it just never stopped raining and we played right through it and we were playing through puddles, it seemed. And, you know, it was just fantastic because I had excuses. You know, <laughs> you need excuses. So, um, so Mitch Cook is in his sixth year. He's holding shot at the moment and watches as his opponent has a run at those. Obviously trying to hit his own and punch the shot bowl out or kill the, kill the end. So he's won the Otago Junior Singles title um, earlier in his career. Uh, he was uh, part of the Otago development team, Mitch Cook, and has had um, one appearance with the, uh, the senior team. So that indicates that he's got plenty of potential or plenty of ability. One of your top supporters marking today. Uh, uh, Araya um, has actually stepped in to help out being the event controller. Yep. Um, I sort of, yeah, I needed him really. Let's get a bit busy out there. <laughs> well, he's a good mate of Adam Batty who played in the competition. In fact, Araya also played in the uh, preliminary rounds, didn't he, at the, uh, in the Carpenty Yeah, those, those two go to a lot of tournaments together. Yep. Yeah, nice opening bowl from Mitch Cook. So if you've just joined us, this, uh, this competition, which is uh, Super Singles Year 1 to 8 players, um, it's what we call the short form of bowls. It's three bowl singles. We're playing two sets, six ends. Um, matches can be determined by a one-end tiebreaker. Uh, one power play per set, not just per game, so one power play per set, and it's been interesting how this has been used. The uh, jack is always on the same spot, but they can move the mat out as far as they like within the uh, rules regarding distance. Here's another good ball coming in from Mitch Cook. So you've had good reaction, have you, with the format, Fletch? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I tried to make something <coughs> that was interesting and fast uh, and also just reduce the number of bowls so that it potentially uh, there'd be less driving, but <laughs> that doesn't seem to be the case, really. That's um, a top shot. But no, no, it's a good fun format. And, you know, one of the... Well, I sort of did it for two reasons, really. One is that um, there's not really a pathway for junior players... Uh, who win their champ champ singles or their centre open singles? But the other reason is that um, you know I sort of see clubs. I mean, some clubs are growing; it's great. But I see other clubs that are dwindling. Um, I mean, now in Thai Happy, you don't have a bowling club, and so bowls is going to be dead there, and it, and it probably won't come back. And a lot of the people that you sort of talk to and say, "Well, come and play bowls," they go, "No, nah, it's all day. We haven't got time. Mm. Um, you know, I've got family, I've got a wife, I've got work on the weekends." And so I sort of thought if we could develop a game that lasted about a couple of hours, and one round of this is about two hours. Yep. So you play two games and mark one, and you could run a tournament like this over six weeks at your club. Yep. And it might just be a way of getting you know new people into bowls. Um, singles might be a little bit hard, so we're working on a, a pairs format as well, so that maybe a long bowler could play with a bowler. Um, but yeah, that's really just those two reasons, and seems to have been accepted pretty well by the players. Just have a look at this. Uh, it wasn't much of a target there for Rickman. As I said, he uh, he plays here at the uh, Nine Eye Club and was able to scorch those two balls out of the shot, grab the single for himself. He now leads by two to one after three ends. And um, and speaking of juniors, I must uh, gives me an opportunity to plug um, an event that you've 
played in, I think, um, Fletch at the Ramati Bowling Club on the 19th and 20th of August. We've got a junior 242 tournament there, you know, any combination. Um, last year we had a waiting list for it, and uh, all those who played last year will be getting a reminder about this one, but certainly if you're at all interested, and in, you can, um, particularly in the southern part of the North Island, I suppose, because that makes it easier for uh, travel, but... Uh, Ramati Bowling Club at Outlook.com or if you know me you can PM me, there's no problem with that, you'll find me so uh, even though I'm no longer the president there Fletch, I, okay. I handed over the reins yesterday at our annual general meeting. Alright, who's the president now? Uh, Heather Simpson has moved in so okay. be firm control Ok <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, that's yep. excellent club. Yep. And she's, uh, interestingly that we talk about juniors um, on our committee for next year uh, there are uh, five juniors five junior players Absolutely. have gone on into the management role so and they're really keen to develop their bowls of course and don't want administration duties to uh, interfere with that but they're they're keen and so that's really outstanding I think um, and it gives people like me who would like to play a bit more bowls <laughs> a bit of time too so that um, 19th and 20th of August at the Ramati Bowling Club a junior 242 and uh, Romati Bowling Club at Outlook.com. Great place to play too. Yeah, I've seen you there a few times. How long um, were you president there? Four years. Four. Yeah. Twi that's, that's a good twice as long as I wanted term, to be. John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think <laughs> I didn't feel as though I'd, um, you know, n not put in an effort. <laughs> so. so Rickman now leading 2 1. We're playing the fourth end of this final of the plate. And the prize money, it's $400 for the winner and 300 for the runner-up, 200 and 100 for those, uh, or was it, are they playing a third no, and fourth? No, third and fourth, actually, we, we all agreed just to split, just split the prize that, money. Yeah. So 150 each. Um, yeah. yeah, some of them need to be driving back. Yep, and, yep. Mm. It's just one of the little things that we learnt this year. Yeah. There was a few things that we did wrong that you couldn't really know was going to be wrong. Well. Um, but you did when you did it and found out. It's seldom you start perfectly, yeah. eh? This is a good track here from Rickman, the bright yellow bowls. If he moves the jack, he's in a handy position with those not being short back there. That's two, possibly three shots here for Rickman with that last bowl of his. That's virtually the set. Yeah. Power plays to go. Mitch Cook from Brighton. Looking to salvage this. Might be just a bit narrow on this. So no one's taken a power play yet? No. Okay, all right. Automatic power play. Yeah, now, yeah. So Mitch is going to need, need all three, eh? Three. Three, three for six. No, it is. He did get a three on this end too, Steve Rickman. So he moves to five. Five, one, two ends to go. So a power play here from Mitch Cook, you would think. And uh, in that, he would just need a couple to tie it up. What do we got? Any power play? No indication yet? Uh, it's automatic. Uh, oh, no. So, no, no. Sorry, this no. is the fifth end. This is it? only the fifth end, yeah. Yeah. Hit on myself. Yeah. So they're both playing without the power play, power play yet. So that'll come up in the next end, the final end of the first set. 5-1 Rickman leads. It was interesting. When you mark the first game, so you're coming into the second game and the guy you're playing has obviously just played. It was a really good tactic when... Uh, I forgot who I was, I was playing, but I came in from marking, so I stepped to the mat. He's just bowled a game. Yeah. He called the power play immediately, um, thinking that you know he had the best chance of winning the first first end, which is true. Yeah. So it was good thinking.
So that light's become a bit awkward there, hasn't it, I think? Yeah, a little bit, special with yellow yeah. bowls. That, yeah. <laughs> well, Steve said, you know, um, I've been told I'm silly having yellow bowls because if, unless you do like he's done right there, put one on the jack, he said you can stay stand out if you're uh, not accurate. You don't want to bowl a wrong bias is one of those. Yeah. <laughs> He's using uh, red line SR4s there. Or size 4, I mean, SRs. Uh, and nice weight. Second shot. Yeah, the sun's getting him right in the eye. Not concerned, not bothering to wear a cap. Good concentration. That's the one. One. <coughs> Can't look. Can't look. Hmm. Smooth delivery from Mitch Cook. Good track too. Oh, he's going to nail this, isn't he? Yeah, that's yeah great ball, that's a beaut ball. That saved a real uphill battle. Yep. So now with the power play to be used on this final end, it's Rickman leaving, leading by five to two. So most of the players that have got through to this uh, stage, how many games would they have played? How many games did they play and uh, how many would they have won to get through to qualifying here? Oh, um, they played six games yesterday, was it? Or? Yes, it were eight yesterday. We played eight. six in um, section play, yep. two in post-section. And <clears throat> yeah, another uh, four post-section games today. Yep. Um, I look off the top of my head... Um, I can't really tell you how many. Yeah. I mean, no one's won all their games, put it that way. Oh, right. And there's been a lot of people, you know, if you're sort of playing 25 up singles, you'd yeah. expect to yeah, yeah, yeah. see, you know, some unbeaten guys at the top and a lot of people down the bottom. But this, this format just means that, um, oh, 13 games, I've just been told by yeah. Brendan. Yeah. Um, yeah, that this format, you sort of got to play a lot of games. It's a bit like pool versus snooker. Yeah. So you play a lot of games and the cream should rise to the top. Yep. Well, that's a bit of cream that's there, handy. isn't it? From Brighton and Otago, Mitch Cook looking to dislodge this. He did it perfectly with his last bowl going the other way. Not far off it there, gosh. And, and Rickman will be aware of that. So where does he put this one? Change his hand and cover those couple He's of bowls. Yeah, both using the power play. But Cook needs to get at least two. This is handy, I think. Yep. If you can get round that, that's really good. Now, that's a top spot. Yep. However, um, I'd say Cook holds second shot with that one out to the right. Well, now he's going to... Uh, yeah. Doesn't slice it, he'd be right. Yeah. Sit on the shot. Rest that out. Oh, he's going with a bit of weight this time. <laughs> he had the back bowl. He had the closest to the tee. That's his third and final bowl gone. And Rickman's not going to bother playing. He has the shot and therefore the first set. First set. So there we have the draw. Brent Hawken was beaten by Rodney Downs. 
and uh, that went to a tiebreaker. Michael State beat Adam Blucher. So it's State and Downs through to the final. That'll be that'll be very exciting. Evan Jones uh, lost to Mitch Cook, and uh, we saw Rickman beat Doug Coombs of South Otago. So the plate final will, is uh, Cook against Rickman, and later we'll have the big final between Downs and Stace. Not a bad opener from Steve Rickman, just outside the circles. I was giving Sharon Sims a good plug before. Mate, when I looked at you on the mat and I said to Sharon, I'll be saying, oh, no, um, what you should do this. Oh, no, you're going well here. Did she have much of an influence on you or did you not oh, come I, under her coaching? I, I go to Sharon for delivery. I call them checkups. Yep, good. Um, sort of probably in, during the season, maybe <clears throat> every three months. Yep. And you walk away with something you've got to change, probably only one thing. Um, so you go away and practice it and come back and if... If you don't, um, you're probably not much point coming back. Yeah. You know, so um, no, her time's valuable, but no, no I haven't. Uh, I haven't met a better technical coach uh, in the three years I've been no. playing. Definitely. I don't think you'll want this one back. Yeah, it's interesting if he can swing the momentum in this set going into a one end tiebreaker if you've got the momentum with you. Um, more than more more often than not you take it, don't you? Yep. <laughs> Come on. So out of the Silverstream Club, Steve Rickman. Come on. In fact, with uh, Leighton Wilding, they reached the semi-finals of the Wellington Open 2-4-2s recently. So while he hasn't uh, hasn't won anything of significance, uh, he's in a pretty strong club at Silverstream. And you know, if you win a junior title or a title there, you you're uh, not a bad bowler. Yeah, the Wellington um, qualifying round had some brilliant players in it. I certainly wouldn't have, wouldn't wanted to have run a book for that long. No. That's two brilliant bowls there from Mitch Cook. Uh, dropping the first set 7-2. And Steve Rickman puts the scores up on the board down the other end. And concedes a two on the first end of this second set. When would you play your power play in this, this, set, this set, John? I, I, well, it's nice to be up by two, but, but I think I'd probably still wait until about end five. Okay. Yeah. But you've got to sort of see what happens, don't you? You want to have the... You want to well, he just bowled two really good yeah, bowls. Yeah, yeah, so why, 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 yeah, you could, so, uh, you're right. And going the other way, he's played it so well, so he might just say, right, I, I bowled it so well going the other way, I'll use it now to double in my numbers. I noticed you left it till the last end, did you, in your uh, uh, last yeah, game, both yeah, times? Yeah, I was trying to keep it up my sleeve. Yeah. Oh, that's good bad. balls, that's pretty good. One down. So now I'd imagine that Cook will change his hand here because yeah, that's... <laughs> is, that, is the yellow ball level or...? Is he going to? Is it level, the yellow ball? Just finding no. out the position of the Below. jack in relation to the bowl. I don't know, he's going to stay on that backhand. Believes he can get him there.
just looking to go under his own and sit that yellow, but I, I would have thought the other hand, that's what I would have been thinking, oh, I can see that now, I can hit the, the yellow and, and or the jack, but I'm not up to this sort of standard, so it oh. just goes through my mind, you know. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, I, <coughs> I think you were right. Well, I mean, there's a different, whole lot of different roads to yeah. roam, aren't there? But yep. He's got the tea covered now, anyway. So. He's going again on this hand. He likes it. He has played his first ball exceptionally well. Even if he just touches his own, he's uh, in for shot. Yeah, one roll. Yeah. Whoops, at the shot. <laughs> oh, gee. Just making sure. Well, he's sitting flat. The other one's yeah, looks yeah. like it's on its end on the line. So you'd think that he's got shot as he goes back down. You'll see how hard he tries. Yeah, it? that's right. <laughs> I'm not going to bowl it. What's that? Not going to bowl it. Not going to bowl it. Uh, yeah, he's not going to try at all. There we are. So he believes he's got the shot. So Rickman. Bounces back from dropping a two on the first to pick up a single, question mark. This didn't add up. We'll see if uh, Mitch Cook concedes it. Yeah, coward. Sorry. <laughs> Might see the measure come out or not. Yep. It's gone. No measure. So we've had uh, two ends gone. It's 2-1 in favour of the man who dropped the first set by 7-2, Mitch Cook from Brighton. This is the plate final at Super Singles. One thing I have noticed in this tournament is the lack of, well, the, a lot of people just not bothering to measure. They just trust their eyes, mm. call it, get on with it. Nice weight, nice bowl. What's that logo? It looks like a cocktail with a slice of yeah, orange on the side, yeah, doesn't it? Looks like a martini. Yeah, or yeah. Like yeah. Not a mile away either from Mitch Cook. a uh, bit shorter than it appeared so he'll be looking to change somewhat there we go perfect view thank you guys Just looking for that jack. He could see it. It'll be quite visible from the mat. This is where you really would like four bowls. <laughs> mm -hmm. That three it is. And it makes it a very interesting and exciting competition. So he's holding two. He's not going to want to fatten it up here, is he? No, I just think he might <coughs> just push it. Oh, no, he's going to draw another shot. I wonder whether he'd go... Deep, so he's drawn a third. That's not bad. That's really impressive. So options here now for Cook are limited. It's a matter of just refining his first two bowls. He's got the jack, which could 
bring him bring it back here he could bring it back here or he could sit in amongst those yellows and cut it down from three to two what does he do does he get the jack he's not far he's off trying. the jack just going to slide oh no he gets it oh he's great done ball. it again pressure bowls from mitch cook and from a position of being three down with his last bowl he snares the jack and grabs the shot three one not much reward for three really outstanding bowls from steve rickman And he'll look at that later and say, yeah, but they were three pretty good bowls. I had three shots, but I just needed one slightly over the jack, you know, for yeah. for such a shot as that. Absolutely. Here it goes. Well, we've seen the shot. It was just such a perfect bowl from Mitch Cook, who's now going to use his power play. No, Rickman's using his power play. No, no, it is Cook. Yep. So this is the fourth end. Looks narrow for that hand, doesn't it? Yep. Mind you, you'll probably get a wee feather on the inside and settle <laughs> in on the jack. So he's undercooked his uh, green both times and he's using the power play. Yeah, that's that's the trick. You don't want to waste them when you've got the power play in your hand. Rickman using the forehand, jogs off after it. This man from the Silverstream Club in the Hutt Valley. Right, and Mitch, you played it, played a pearler on the last end to get up and grab the shot. You have to do it again. This is your power play. Better green. Better green and pull the jack back to yourself and give yourself everything. That's close. Oh, what a shot. What a saving shot from Mitch Cook. Having used his power play, there's still one bowl to come. But he's got the shot, which would give him two, and therefore a 5-1 lead. Here we see it again. A, it's a bowl from play. Rickman, first of all, which settled in nicely for the shot to give him two. And then Cook had to use his third bowl, this one here. Had to make quite an adjustment on his green. As you can see, his two previous bowls away to the left, and he did so. Great weight. Settles, settles in for the shot, right. So, Rickman. He's got his power play up his hand for the f next set if he needs to use it then, or will he prefer to wait till the end? Oh, we've had that. Oh, we've had the shot. So I didn't see that. I see uh, one in the ditch, so we just missed that. So anyway, it's a shot to Mitch Cook, and that gives him two. Here we go. The run shot by Rickman was narrow. Play, parked itself in the ditch and we have the power play use five to one now playing the fifth end Rickman not using his power play yet so that's Cook so really needs to pile them on here doesn't he if he can get another couple then that's uh That'll really make it difficult for Rickman. Gotcha.
just notice uh, when this bowl is played, the scoreboard down the far end says 5-3, uh, but it is in fact 5-1. As we see Mitch Cook looking to build on this end, so he has the shot, he's put the pressure on Rickman. Certainly is on my mind, yes. Close <laughs> to the two, two metre that is. Yeah, that was close. He had two options there, didn't he? Could either hit his own, own one up into the shot area or pick up the jack, and he just about took it clean. So Cook started playing bowls in his early 20s. He's a sixth-year player now. That looks very narrow from where I see it. He doesn't want to nudge up uh, Rickman's bowl. <laughs> okay, one to go on this end, and it is Rickman who's using... No, he's not using his power play. He's got that next end. Well, he wasn't shy at the one bowl target before. No, no. But if he does, he'll want to nominate the kill because he doesn't own the tee, does he? He has nominated the kill. Great. Okay. Looking at the angle, if he hits it, it should kill. Well, or maybe, maybe not. He's got a good line around his own, hasn't he? So look at that there. Let that go. Ooh. Oops. No. So it is one uh, one shot at least there to Cook. Yep. Just watching down the far end as they walk away from us. That's uh, one shot. Yep, certainly the yellow first, closest yellow is closer than the wing bowl of Cook's. So basically it's automatic power play from oh. Steve now. Yep. It's power play for me. Okay. And he needs all three. Otherwise, it's tiebreaker. It is. And then we get to see what happens if they uh, who wins the toss and what they do. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So six-one is the score. We're playing the final end of the second set. It might be the final end of the match, but if it is, it means that Steve Rickman has picked up a three on the final end to double his points as he's using the power play to give him a 7-6 win. And all Mitch Cook wants to do is make it difficult for him to get three inside his first one. And that is going to be difficult to get three inside that. He really needs to move the jack a little bit now if he can. On that hand, yeah, it looks a bit wide, doesn't it? And but too much on it, mind you. The plan is he's well, sinking to himself. Can, that's a two meter something. mark. I can take it back there. That's good. So at the moment, Mitch Cook can play quite defensively. He's got the shot. Oh, no, he might not have in a moment. He's going to knock himself out. <laughs> Looking for the two metre there. Oh, he might have gone in the ditch, I think. He has. Wow. He'll be going back saying, what on earth did I do then? <laughs> cool game. Now, his big chance is to take the jack back but he's not up for that no and he's no. used his kill yep. so yep mm. I'm sure that's what um, Mitch was looking to do initially was to get to the two meter mark and he's done it this time I 
can't see a three there, can you? No, no. Mm. Oh, well, practice shot. to take out both of his opponent's bowls. <laughs> bang yeah, on to well, bang. Uh, yeah. Collision would have been good. Not a tie break, surely. Tough shot. Yeah, I mean, mathematically possible. Yeah, yeah. It gives away the single. And so the second set is won by Mitch Cook in this final of the plate. And we now move to a tiebreaker. Is that my consolation prize if I lose? So Cook has the mat first up. So it was just a single on that, I think, and so seven one, the final score in that second set. I'm just checking the board down there, which hasn't been accurate, but oh, it is seven one. So the scores Rickman winning the first 7 2, Cook the second 7 1. Now we have the tiebreaker. There's the first bowl into the shadows. Getting close to sorting out the winner of the plate in the super singles at 9 I. Cook's weight was the better of the two. Now just needs to bring his line on a wee bit. Hasn't really made that adjustment, I don't think. Ah, two together. Cool. Okay, it's a tiebreaker, and you've got one bowl left for Rickman. It's a matter of weight adjustment to get the shot here. Much narrower line than what Cook uh, was using. Oh, look. Here we go. Here we go. Is that the winning shot Step tonight? <laughs> yeah. He's got the two metre covered. He's got the shot. And he can dominate a kill. Is that what he's done there or I'm not? Not sure. Just a flick of the arm, but maybe he's just asking him to get out of the road. He's certainly going to have a go, so maybe that's what he has done. Nominated the kill, I don't know. Oh, it's not going to work whichever way it goes. And so without having to play his third bowl, Silver Stream's Steve Rickman has beaten Mitch Cook to win the plate championship here at 9 I in the Super Singles. Culmination of a great couple of weekends, a couple, great couple of days here and lots of weekends around the country as eliminations were held, centre representatives were uh, selected and we get down to this clash between these two in the plate final. Mitch Cook of Brighton defeated by Steve Rickman of Silverstream and Rickman wins the $400 first prize plus the title. Some highlights and then we will be back with the big final this afternoon between Michael State and whoever he's playing and I haven't got it there. Um, who was it again? Rodney. Rodney Downs, of course.